I'm gonna be surprisingly good at that role. <laughs> yeah, cause it's all it's all from the cliches. Go hard or go home. No mean nothing though, right? <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. I am Charles Lewis, your internet marketing specialist. Welcome to the most entertaining podcast with SEO content on the known planets. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Remember, we are your friendly local neighborhood top position snatchers. Yes. And our mantra is... Don't be a douche. As always, uh, it is not a good look. Uh, <laughs> as always, there is a tip from our previous podcast. Our previous podcast was number 190190. The tip is take advantage of authorship and plus one buttons when performing spring cleaning on your website. Yeah, if this is that time of the year where you're maybe giving your website a facelift or you're updating the content and you're making some changes, um, take advantage of the new um, tools and applications that are out there that Google has provided to help increase at your rank, like authorship. Set up that authorship so your avatar can display in search results. Add those plus one buttons to your site so people can can bolt your site up, and, which would uh, improve the likelihood of you getting ranked higher. So so take advantage of uh, G plus when you're um, um, updating your website. Excellent. Um, if you can, if you know how, if you have the technology in your at your fingertips right now, go ahead and pull up that device and tweet now. And what you should tweet is hashtag SEO podcast. Um, this is number 191. Be sure to tag us in it at eWebStyle. Um, that way we can link up and social network with you and all of that good stuff. Um, also remember, there's two things that you can do for us. And one of those things requires three steps. And that is go to iTunes, make an account, and write a review. Uh, write a review if you've gotten good information from our podcast, if you're entertained by our podcast, if you just appreciate the fact that the audio in our podcast has improved. <laughs> um, please write that review. Also, what you could optionally do is send us an email, podcast at e-webstyle.com. And uh, we'll give you a patoof, which stands uh, for... Punch in the face. It's a good thing, by the, the way. The other thing that you could do is you could go to our G Plus local page and write a review. You know how valuable G Plus local reviews are, so we would really appreciate that. And you also know how long the URL for G Plus local pages yeah, it's is. Right. Plus.google.com slash post slash one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, ten. eleven, twelve, dot post. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, we don't need all of that instead. What you can do is you can go to e webstylecom slash G plus or slash G plus or slash Google plus or slash Google plus. All of those will <laughs> immediately forward you to our Google plus local page where you can write a review. We will really, really how many appreciate really's? that. Two. We'll yeah, go with two, two really. reallys this yeah, time. Two really Next today. time, maybe it'll be three. We'll, we'll feel more generous with our reallys. Remember, we have a referral program. If, uh, if you're in the web design business, you're listening to our podcast to improve your own website, and you have clients asking about SEO services for their websites that you're making for them, and you already know how hard it is because you're doing it on your site, send them to us, and you could get paid. And yeah, we'll take care of it. Um, we do have our segment, the algorithm cataclysm. <laughs> Ooh, that looked really good <laughs> yeah, over there. That, that was good. And I'll tell you, that is the best, most cheapest special effects I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so algo cataclysm. Um, so how many of you guys remember, this isn't like a new algorithm change Google has made, but it's more of a search engine result page change. So back in um, April... Back in April of 2010, they released the instant previews. And if you remember that, that was when you could hover. You could hover over a little arrow oh, yeah. next to the that. SERP listing, and then you would get a screenshot of how that website looked. They said that it was going to be great, that it would increase user activity, people would feel more confident clicking. Problem was, nobody used it, right? And so Google has made two changes on that search result page. One, they removed instant previews. So that's not there anymore. Two, they've also removed the option to uh, plus one this link. Remember, you could do that at one point. Click plus one and then uh, to plus one a particular search result without clicking on it. Can't do that either anymore now. Instead, what they've added, and check it out when you get, because you probably haven't noticed it, there's a new green arrow on the search result. And when you click that green arrow, you'll get a drop down, and it'll show you 
um, it'll give you an option to share it with G+. It'll give you an option to view the cash version of that site. Um, and it'll give you the option to see that instant preview. So, um, so that's your cataclysm. No more instant previews, no more plus ones from the SERP. Uh, you have to use the green arrow to get access to that kind of stuff. I actually, I'm kind of, I like I'm ambivalent. Uh, I don't care that it's gone because I never used it. So. I used it occasionally. Yeah. Every now and then it was like, hmm, I'll hover. That's pretty cool. I think that's the site. Yeah, that's it. You yeah, know, kind of site click on. confirmation before mm -hmm. you actually commit to a click. Definitely. Because you know, our clicks are valuable here. Yeah. Just want, just want you guys to know that. Um, I'll, the only piece of news that I've got, a bunch of comments that I found uh, on podomatic.com, so we'll go through some of those. One really cool tidbit about getting um, Google to index your domain name uh, from, uh, uh, from actually breaking apart the words. So the example was conjugateburb.com. Uh, I'll be reading that. Uh, the only piece of news I have is Facebook re either releases or re-releases trusted friends. Mm -hmm. So say you forget your password, you don't remember your first pet, you don't know your mom's last name, and oh, you, you forgot your, your birthday. You can ask three, so you create a list of trusted friends, mm -hmm. and then you can ask them, and Facebook will send one password to each of them. Your friends will get that back to you, and then, uh, and then you, you can, can log actually in. log back into your account. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, that's kind of as long as you trust them. Yeah, well, so long <laughs> it's really, friends, right? really, really, you should choose two friends who really don't like each other. Yeah. Right, because as long as they don't ever conspire to get into your Facebook account, <laughs> yeah, you're no okay. Um, yeah. And so if you have one oddball or maybe and nobody knows who the one last trusted friend is, you mm -hmm. know, so you maybe do your mom. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> like my wife, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> and then two best friends and, and, wife. and a wifey, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. I'm not worried about my wife having my password. Exactly. Just not an issue. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool because there are some accounts out there that w y when you lose the password, and, and in some case it makes sense. For instance, we have a password program that we use here, and if you were to lose your passphrase, you just, just lose access. It. Yeah. It's just gone. That's it. Bye-bye. Adios. So, um, so I thought that was pretty cool, and that is the only news. Okay. Here's a comment. This is, uh, I think we've read, he's commented on all sorts of places, so he really deserves the patoof that he's going to get now. This is from uh, Daniel Street, Soulmates Photography. He actually mm -hmm. posted uh, on our Podomatic page, hands down the best SEO podcast on the internet, tons of useful advice, and after listening over the past year, I have used approximately 20% of their advice, and I'm <laughs> on page one of seven different keywords on Google. That's what's Can't, up. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to use more their more of their excellent advice. I can honestly say that this will be a banner year for me. Profits are way up, and that says a lot about e -web style. Hey guys, next beer's on me. Uh, Nick, could you figure out where he's located yeah, we and schedule next, that trip? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going over there. Well, Daniel, appreciate it, man. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. I'm glad it's working for you. Um, I'm be honest. I would like some more information. What's worked for you? What have you tried? What site did you implement it on? Um, and, and I would like to, you know, see how that worked for you. And, um, and that way we can, uh, we, can, we can see how that works. Yeah, I have no clue what to do. <laughs> Just keep going. Keep, keep, keep doing the podcast. <laughs> Has so anyone uh, said cut? No, they didn't. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I w I'm interested to see what, what sort of uh, things did you try? Did you, did you kind of um, um, a benchmark? what you did prior to using some of the advice we give, um, uh, just be cool. But it's always good to hear people trying what we say and it's working for and them. And succeeding, yeah. yeah that, that, Imagine that's what's up. what we do with our clients if just our 30-minute uh, yeah. advice once a week is getting, getting one you. of, uh, he's on page one for seven different keywords uh, on Google. That's awesome. Okay, so we had uh, David Hinckley actually uh, submitted a comment on Podomatic, and it says, Charles, you can break up the word hardy plank in HTML, and this is referring to a podcast a while back, uh, with hardy plank to force Google uh, to see words in a compound phrase. The word hardy will now be part of your search terms. I have proved this with, with this article. So he wrote this article, and the article oh, is... Oh, I remember what podcast he's referring to, too. Right? Mm-hmm. And what he said is, how to rank individual terms of a compound domain name with Google using the HTML span. And basically, he went, he went and he did a href, uh, a link, and for the actual content that was linked, he did span, con in the, so the domain is conjugateburb.com. He did open span, that's mm -hmm. S-P-A-N as in Nancy, conjugate, close span, 
open span verb close span dot com. And what that does is make sure that Google really, really it's knows it's two that separate it's words. conjugate verb. Um, and and so not he, conjugate verb. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then, but the user sees conjugate, conjugate verb. verb. Yeah. And uh, he says he's actually placing well for verb.com in that in that situation. So um, that's pretty good. And and I get that. And I, I'm aware of some other ways you can get Google to do that as well. In that particular particular case, the issue wasn't necessarily ranking for both terms because in, in uh, the client, you know, James Hardy, frankly, doesn't want its trusted vendors to market under the incorrect spelling. So it wasn't that we couldn't show for that. It was that Google was recognizing the incorrect spelling. Mm, I see that. So his his point was put in span party. Yeah. And then put the E in span. So when they see it, they'll see the regular version. But and, and you're idea. right. That's, that's a, a great, great idea. idea. We'll, we'll yeah. frankly, we'll probably implement that. <laughs> but my, my, my thing is that why does Google automatically make the incorrect spelling their correct version? Yep. That that was my issue. It wasn't. I mean, I knew more a knock on Google. Exactly. Than, yeah. yeah I, we have tons of HTML and different coding and tricks we can do to get the right word there. Uh, but it's the more of a principle deal. Google, this is the incorrect spelling. Well, it's kind of a it's <laughs> you a, know? it's a it's a uh, algorithmic inertial issue. Yeah. Right. So the inertia is everyone's using Hardy without the i.e. just finishing with the i and so now you have this inertia and so your suggest search keeps leading them to di the i mean spelling. frankly hardy may ne may actually have to petition google to make a mm -hmm. manual change in order to to have that done and i'm i'm sure that, that frankly that's probably the only way to make it done because all the searches now are being performed as Easy. hardy yeah. di so uh very interesting well, appreciate that info man um i, I would have i had a different way to do that um, I would. I didn't think of using span tax for that. To be honest, I usually use span tax for for styling, and this, in a sense, this is a form of style. So uh, it makes perfect sense. So appreciate that. Good stuff, Mr. Hinckley. Uh, hopefully, you haven't shot any presidents lately. <laughs> um, and then finally, we have this. Uh, this. Oh, I didn't even get his name in this. Oh well. Okay, let's skip that Rich. one. We'll do. We'll do this one. We'll do Rich. Rich says, uh, "Great podcast. Just found it last week." And uh, that was posted 444 <laughs> days ago. Oh, that was in, like, wow, 2011 sometime? 2010, yeah. 2012? A while back, yeah. as we say. Remember, you are listening to the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. That is because of all you all. We really do appreciate you. If you've listened to our podcast before, you know that approximately now is the time that the potatoes ends and the meat <laughs> begins. Yeah, so I bought an article today. I got this from Search Engine Journal. Um, 11 ways to get your local search strategy to the next level. And so I usually, I like pulling articles with numbers and different tips and things like that. Um, one, because everyone has a checklist and I'm always curious to see um, what that checklist is. Um, and as I was going through this one, um, it was kind of vague. Some things that we were, we were going to more depth on. Some others um, I kind of disagreed with. And so we'll, we'll look at these and, um, and, and take it from there. Uh, remember, this is focusing on your local search strategy. So number one, he says, um, uh, broaden your horizons, right? And uh, and I, I like the concept of that. Basically, what he's saying is think outside the box, right? You can't. It's a local, local search strategy. And so with that, you can't stick to the same things you're always doing. Uh, a standard local strategy would be, you know, uh, set up a Google Places local plus account, and then and put all my information on there. Right, and then I'll even take it a step further and maybe set up some Angie's List or City Search or things like that. But but what he's saying here is to when broaden your horizons, when you start thinking outside the box, think about other things you can do locally. Since this is a local strategy, uh, maybe even offline that will help with your online deals. So for example, you may want to um, have some business events, maybe a meet and greet um, with the owners or something like that, and it's an event that you can schedule, that you can publish in some local calendar through the local paper, right? That's, a, that's another link. Uh, but more importantly, engage your local community in what you're offering. And so that way they can familiarize themselves with your brand, with your location, and things like that. Because all of that sorts of things um, affect your online local strategy. Uh, which kind of goes into number two, which was uh, organize and participate uh, in events. So, for example, let's say you are a local um, well, plumbing person, right? 
um, you're a local plumber and you service a certain zip code, a certain area. Why not, if you have a physical location, why not uh, run seminars that show people how to uh, install a new faucet or how to maintain the correct water pressure or, or whatever it is and invite people over so that people can come, so they can learn, so they can take notes. More importantly, they can share the information that they learned on different social sites and online, which all helps your brand, helps people recognize where you are locally. So, so you know, participate in different local events. Um, number three, advertise offline. Anytime you're doing a local search or a local campaign, I, I, I'm a firm believer that offline advertisement and offline efforts um, strategically help with what you're doing online. For example, um, if you're a local business and using the same example, you're a plumber, um, it's worth it for you to run offline advertisement, traditional stuff, radio, TV, uh, because the one benefit to, to offline advertisements is that you can somewhat target it to a certain area. And so you may not, you know, want to broadcast the entire city of Houston. You may want to run it um, at, during a certain time, during a certain region, right, for your service. And so offline advertisement gives you the ability to do that. But more importantly, you can tie it into your local stuff. All offline advertisements should have a link to your site, um, uh, maybe a link to, uh, well, not necessarily a link, but the address listed to where they can post those reviews and see citations and things like that. Maybe a QR code? Definitely a QR code, which was not what I was going to go to. What he didn't mention on here till later was uh, the use of uh, mobile. Anytime you're talking local, you should really be talking mobile um, in that same sentence because... Um, Local searches, most local searches tend to happen on a mobile device. And so keep mobile in mind when you're working on your local strategy. Um, number four, measure everything. When I say everything, everything. Measure traffic to the site. Measure uh, how many people came in and where they came from. Measure um, uh, bounce rate. Measure, measure everything. How many forms you got from that. Um, how many phone calls you received from that, how many people actually converted. Measure everything, sit back, look at analytics, that way you can figure out what worked and what didn't work. And I'm gonna take measure everything and, and you should make that across the board. Not just with your local strategy, but with your SEO strategy, with your paid strategy, with your social strategy. Uh, measure, measure, measure. You must quantify in order to determine what's working and what's not. Number five, he put, um, it's not just about consistency. And so I think with that, people were, you know, we're still talking local. The consistent thing to do was, okay, consistently get reviews, consistently update my images, consistently update my videos, consistently keep my, my Google Local Plus business page updated. And I, I, I'm not too sure about that. I think that's kind of a norm, right? You have to be consistent or you will lose your placement. But I think it's about, um, I think it's about the content. I think you have to be consistent with how you post, with how you publish. If you're doing those events that I talked about earlier, then be consistent with those. Do them quarterly, right? If you're, if you're having these uh, meet and greets, do them consistently. Do them monthly. If you're doing a podcast. Do it consistently. <laughs> do it weekly, right? And so, you know, be consistent with, with what you're publishing and, and give people con what consistency does. It allows people to get a better feel for who you are what your business is about and what they can expect from you. And so when, you, when, you, when you're consistent, then people tend to um, uh, be more comfortable spending money with you. Um, number six, rep reputation management is important. Um, it's extremely important. So you have to do things like monitor the web, right? I, I'm a firm advocate for, for Google Alerts. Set those up so you can see who's saying your name and what they're saying about it. Um, and link to it and, and you can monitor what's being said, what's being done, what's good, what's bad. Um, if you're not monitoring these sort of things, monitoring your reputation, um, then you just won't know. And then, then that's a problem because what, 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 on the web, what you don't know can hurt you. Uh, so, so monitor what's going on. And then not only monitor, but fix it. If indeed you're getting, you know, people complaining because they're not receiving something from your site or whatever fix that problem yeah you know um, if you are getting bad reviews because of a certain you know employee then fix that problem get him you off the phone get him or her don't off the you phone. whatever you got to do uh, but but you have to address those issues and then and not only that um, in situations where things are going okay 
take that extra step to make that client feel appreciative. Send that card, send those flowers, send that gift card. Um, you know, give that, that, that handwritten personal note or that, that, that late evening phone call to thank them. Those are the sorts of things that generate reviews, they generate referrals, and they, at the end of the day, they help with your local strategy. Because if, if you do that to that mom, who let's say that mom is a soccer mom, and she's going to practice, and there's nothing but soccer moms around her, and they all need whatever she got from your store, she's going to share it. And yeah. she's going to share the wonderful experience. And she's going to show them the card that you sent her. Or she's going to pull up drinking the Starbucks that you sent her. Yeah. And so, um, so, so you have to do those things to help with your overall um, local strategy. Number seven, you put uh, embrace you PPC. To, you need to, like, customize the Starbucks cups. You know how they have the Starbucks cups? I got my Starbucks cup from mm. eWeb style. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Right, because if she shows up in the Starbucks, she just assumes she wouldn't got it. Hmm. But, oh, really? How do you... Mm. Yeah, y'all didn't hear that. We may just yeah, yeah keep that Patent one. that somehow. <laughs> somehow. Um, number seven, embrace PPC. Um, I wrote down embrace mobile PPC uh, uh, yeah. because we're talking a local strategy. And so, um, you know, with, with 60% of local searches wait, happening. Wait, 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 wait. We're talking local strategy. Mm -hmm. The title is embrace PPC. Not embrace mobile PPC. Yeah, his was embrace PPC, Ooh, and so I changed yeah. it to embrace mobile PPC. That's the, that's the SEO keyword yeah. in me, <laughs> right? Wow. Um, but but just to think that you know, 60% of of local searches happen on a mobile device is enough to tell me that if I'm doing PPC and I have the budget for it then I need to be doing this on a mobile device um, because that is the quickest way to get somebody to get your phone ringing. After all, when people search from a mobile device, nine times out of ten they're looking to take action. Whether it's, a uh, phone call. Whether it's oh, click the call, great, or, or, you know, nav so I can find this place um, so I can get there. And so definitely um, if you have a mobile, uh, if, you, if you're, you have a local strategy in place and you're doing PPC, spend money doing PPC targeting mobile devices. And then of course change your ads to reflect that. You don't want to run the same ad you're doing on a desktop that you're running on mobile. That mobile ad should be really hard sell focused on the close, which is the call. <coughs> um, number eight, localize your content. Um, I think this is key. You can't have a, a local strategy in place and all of your content is um, generic, right? Or talking about, um, well, I'll use our city, talking about Houston. But let's say you you only do air, work in Missouri City or Sugar Land or wherever your local Suburbs of suburb Houston. of wherever your town is, then your content should be reflective of that. Talk about the, the local things in that immediate area. Maybe the main highway that passes through there or some school event that happened that was pretty popular or, or something like that. That way the people in your area can immediately familiarize themselves um, with your content. More importantly, um, they may have some sort of connection to the event or, or whatever you're referencing that kind of then gives them an emotional kind of reason to read along and, and, and eventually take the action that you're calling them to do. And so, so when possible, um, localize your content. Um, number nine, uh, which is going back mobile, perfect your mobile game. Um, this is an easy one, right? First, have a mobile version. Two, make sure that the things you have on your mobile version um, follow or in line with your strategy. If your main call to action is to have people call, then calling should be the primary deal on that mobile device. If, if your main call is to have people fill out a form and contact you, then um, that may not be what you want to do on a mobile device because filling out a form on the phone is extremely difficult. And so, you know, you may want to change that strategy strictly for mobile or, more, or give them a different way to do it, right? Click here and text us or, or something like that. Take advantage of the technology. Maybe incorporate some social if you need that sort of back and forth because it is be easier to do that on a mobile device. Yep. So uh, number 10, and we're almost done, he put go industrial. And I read about that and he was really talking about, you know, using other tools and things like that. And so, and that's what I tagged it as. Um, use the available tools, right? Um, take advantage of Google Places, set up your Angie's list. Um, they have plenty of tools that you can use that will, that will import all of your local data across the board to several different directories all at once rather than having to do each one of them manually. So, so excuse me, 
um, use the tools available and take advantage of them. And lastly, uh, remain educated. This is number 11, get educated. Stay on top of what's going on um, in your industry locally, right? If there are events going on that's related to your industry, you should be a part of it. Uh, if not organizing it, yeah. or if not sponsoring it, or some somehow or another, you should be there. Your logo should be present. Your uh, presence should be there. The people, the clients, should be aware that you are there and you're part of the reason why that's happening. And and when you do that, what people don't realize is when you do that, that gives that gives you the 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 permission, the credibility. the credibility. There you go, and the power to come and ask somebody for a referral. Or to or to pitch them or give them a sales pitch because they know you help sponsor this entire event. Right. So so definitely remain educated on what's going on in your industry, uh, in your local area uh, for what you offer. And that's really you know eleven strategies on how you can um, um, use offline deals and all sorts of other things to help with your online local strategy. Local strategy. All right. Do we have uh, that? Is the meat? Do we have any blank stare? Um. Kinda. I got blank stare. Yeah, this this is a personal blank stare. Go Rockets. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Go Rockets, beat the Thunder. I love hockey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's my favorite side. I really enjoy high end sports. I should have watched the game last night. I love highlights. I've played soccer for 25 years. Uh, I just don't watch that much sports. So uh, my running joke when somebody brings up any team is like, man, I just I don't watch hockey. <laughs> and the jaws drop. It's awesome. It's like, uh, I was talking about baseball. Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, I at least know the teams that play which sport. I was just you didn't kinda, get it. Yeah. yeah. I once had to tell a girl, I got the first joke. I'm on the second <laughs> joke now. <laughs> ketchup. So Guess what? Ketchup. She didn't get it. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Neither the joke nor the insult. All right, you have been listening to the most popular SEO podcast on <laughs> iTunes. That is because of all you all. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure, go ahead and... Uh, uh, the, you know what, L why don't you stalk us? If, you, if you're getting some good information from us, go to facebook.com slash eWebStyle. Or twitter.com slash eWebStyle. Or youtube.com slash eWebStyle. Or you can send us an email, podcast at e-webstyle.com. Until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. Charles Lewis. Bye-bye for now. <coughs>